Hello everyone, uh, my name is Hannah and I work as a software engineer uh, at KeyFactor and welcome to a video about how to code sign uh, using SignServer and an open PGP signer. So SignServer open PGP and Debian package signing allows securing software release packages and repositories with code signing. The open PGP signer signs arbitrary data and produces an open PGP detached signature in binary or ASCII armored form or a clear text signature. The open PGP signer and Debian DPKG SIG signer use open PGP instead of X509 certificates. The open PGP public key can instead be obtained from the worker's status output. Additionally, the generate CSR functionality allows adding a user ID to the public key and storing the new public key in the PGP public key worker property. For this video, I will be using the sign server Docker container. If you do not know how to do this, you can have a look at a previous video explaining how to start sign server with uh, a Docker container. I will also have a crypto worker already set up uh, that is active. Once I've started my container, this is uh, my sign server uh, start page. I'm going to be going into the administration web. This is where I have uh, all of my workers. And as you can see, I already have a crypto worker. So I'm now going to be pressing add and I'm going to be adding from a template. And this is where I want to find the open PGP signer properties template. And I'm going to choose that one. And I'm just going to click next. Here I can get a configuration overview that I can change uh, if I want to. And as you can see here, uh, I have the crypto token uh, set up to the one I already have. So I'm just going to be applying straight off from the template. And here you can see that my worker is active. If that is not the case for you, you can go into the worker. And here you would see an error message showing what the issue is. In my case, it is already active. So now I'm going to be generating a new key pair, which I will be doing by pressing the renew key. And then here I'm going to be choosing the key algorithm RSA. And I'm going to be changing the T specification to 2048. And then I'm going to be clicking generate. And then you can go into the open PGP signer worker status page again and just see that the worker is still active. The next step I'm going to be showing you is how to add a user ID to my signer. So on the status summary page, uh, you can find a generate CSR button. So I'm going to click that one. And here I'm going to be choosing uh, which signature algorithm I want to use. And in this case, I'm going to be using SHA-256 with RSA. And then I need to specify a DN. Um, and you can see the example uh, on my screen. And then I'm going to be clicking Generate. And then click Download. Once I have downloaded th this file, I will then be copying the content of it. So I'm going to open the file and then I'm going to copy this content. I am now going to return to my open PGP signer and click the configuration tab again. And here I'm going to edit the PGP public key. And I'm going to be pasting the content I just copied and then click submit. I'm now going to return to the status summary page and check that there are no errors. And then I'm going to confirm that there is a PGP key ID that you can see here, as well as a PGP public key. Also note that the user ID is also listed.
Now that I've showed you how to add a user ID to the worker, I'm going to show you how to generate and store a revocation certificate. So I'm going to go back to the configuration page and I am going to change the generate revocation certificate property and I'm going to be setting it to true. Once I've done this, I'm going to go back to the status summary page and again, click generate CSR. And I'm going to use the same SHA-256 with RSA signature algorithm, as well as the same DN, although this, uh, is, this field is not going to be used. So once I've done this, again, I'm gonna be pressing generate and download. This uh, should now be stored securely so that it can be accessed by authorized personnel in case the public key needs to be revoked. I'm now going to go back to my worker again and again click the configuration tab and change the generate revocation certificate back to false. And then just again, checking my status summary page uh, that there is no error on my worker. I've now finished setting up my worker uh, and now I will show you different ways that you can use the worker to sign. You can either use the client web form upload, but you can also use the client CLI or the web services. And you can also use a scripting tool such as curl or vget. I will be showing in this video the how to use it with the client web form upload or the client CLI. First, I'm going to show you how to submit and sign a file with the OpenPGP signer using sign server client web form in your web browser. So first I'm going to go back to the start page and then click client web. Here I'm going to be filling in the name of the signer, which in this case is open PGP signer. And I'm going to be choosing the file that a detached signature for. In my case, this is release zip. And then I'm going to be clicking submit. And then here I can see that it has downloaded my detached signature. The next way of signing I'm going to show you is by using the client CLI. And for this, I need a terminal. And this terminal is currently inside of the Docker. And it is inside of the sign server folder. So here you can see that I have a <coughs> release.zip, which is the file that I'm going to be wanting to sign. And the sign client is under the bin folder. And then the command that I'm going to be using to sign is sign document. And the first property that I'm going to be providing is the worker name, in this case, open PGP signer. The next property is going to be the in file, which is the release.zip file. And then I'm also going to be providing the property for the out file. And here you can see that the file has been sent with the sign client and sign document command. And here you can also see that it has returned my signature. So this is all the steps that I'm going to be showing in this video. All these steps can also be found in the documentation to be reviewed again.